Hello, Dimsdale. I'm Chet Ubecho with today's editorial, which technically makes it a Chetatorial. Tropical Storm Milton, which formed on Saturday, is forecast to strengthen into a hurricane by Monday morning and make landfall on Florida's west coast by Wednesday. The National Hurricane Center warns residents to prepare for the storm, which may reach Category 2 or higher. A separate weather system has already brought 2 to 5 inches of rain to the state, increasing the potential for flooding when Milton arrives. Rainfall totals could exceed 10 inches in some areas. Storm surge and wind damage are also expected to pose significant risks along Florida's coastline. Authorities urge the public to stay informed and ready as the forecast evolves. In other developments, the Biden administration announced that individuals under the Cubans, Haitians, Nicaraguans, and Venezuelans parole program must seek alternative immigration benefits or leave the U.S. when their two-year parole expires. Established to reduce irregular migration, the program allows lawful entry for urgent humanitarian reasons. The Department of Homeland Security emphasized that the parole was always temporary, giving individuals time to pursue asylum, temporary protected status, or other immigration options. If no immigration benefits are pending, parolees must depart or face removal proceedings. The CHNV program was briefly paused for fraud concerns, but has since been re-implemented with additional safeguards. In other updates... Former New York Governor David Patterson and his stepson were attacked Friday night while walking near their home in New York City. Police found the 70-year-old man and his 20-year-old stepson with head and facial injuries, but did not disclose how they were injured. Authorities are searching for at least five suspects connected to the attack, which reportedly involved individuals with prior interactions with Patterson's stepson. Both victims were treated at a hospital and released. Patterson's spokesperson urged people not to politicize the incident and expressed gratitude for the police response and public support. In another update... Following a deadly school shooting at Appalachie High School in Winder, Georgia, Atlanta Public Schools sent a district-wide alert on September 11th, warning parents of potential threats. This triggered widespread concern among parents, leading to difficult decisions about whether to send their children to school. Georgia authorities charged two dozen youths with making threats in the aftermath. The situation highlights the ongoing challenges U.S. schools face due to the frequency of mass shootings and the rise of anonymous threats. Despite added security measures, such incidents leave parents and students grappling with safety, as shown in Atlanta and elsewhere across the country. From all of us here, stay classy, Dimsdale.